iPad OS 15 dropped recently, and there are a bunch of good features. And there's a bunch of people that, I don't know, I think are talking about features that I don't think are that useful. Today, I'm going to walk through the features that I think are super useful for your life that I've actually been using over the whole summer. Before we do that, a few ways you can support the channel. You can like, you can subscribe, all that stuff. There's now YouTube memberships below. Hit the join button. Super thanks if you like the video. Uh, you can also take one of my courses. There's links to all those below. Zettelcast and Tick Tick, a bunch of other apps. Obsidian is coming up. Now let's dive in to the useful features of iPad and iOS 15. Now, one of the first ones is live text, which I'm going to use for the iPhone right now. So I'm going to open my camera. And right here I have, I'll say I had to do some support for this. Um, for a keyboard that I just reviewed, there'll be a link to that. Uh, I think it actually comes out after. So I'm going to hit the live text button and I can actually grab um, the text I want. Let's say the support email. I can copy it. And now if I was to open, oh, anything, I have drafts on here. So let's open drafts. You can see that paste. I've got that right in there and I could send them an email if I wanted to do that. That's been super useful for things like this, for tasks, if I want to like grab the um, number of my barbecue so I could order more parts for it. I can simply scan the back of the barbecue. I looked it up and I can write that all down in Obsidian and then create tasks off of it. That is a super useful feature that I've been using on my iPhone a ton. Next up, tab groups have been really useful for a bunch of things I found now, but at first I really wasn't sure what I was going to use them for. But now I use them for a few things. Let's switch over to my iPad. You see, I've got a few in here. USB-C, just researching some USB-C uh, items for future desk setups. It's easy to switch over to it. Uh, and it quickly brings up all of my tabs, right? I'm looking at a Thunderbolt dock again from Kensington. Actually, I already have one looking at one for my iPad and looking at some of the other Thunderbolt stuff that uh, CalDigit has. So I have stuff for road tires in here, uh, dynamo wheels, it's a bike thing, Mac stories, I'm reading this big review that Frederico has, gravel bikes and radio harnesses. This is for a ski thing. So this has been really useful instead of bookmarks because these have a short life. Once I buy the radio harness, I don't need the tab group anymore. So it's not as important. Right, and I'm looking up. These are the two radio harnesses I'm looking at for skiing for the year. These two. So, how do we use tab groups? I'll go back to one tab. Let's say I'm looking up books, right? And I have a couple tabs of books I want to read. Let's say this one. And I'll go back to Amazon and we're looking up what other book? Uh, there's probably got to be a book in my history here. No. Oh, sure. Courage is calling. So I say one of these two books are ones. This is a new Ryan Holiday book. This is actually a book I want to buy. So these two books right here, let's say I'm going to save them. I can come up to the top corner. I can move to a tab group if I wanted. Um, or I can also come over to the left side and hit plus. And I can say new tab from our new group from two tabs. Then I name it. So books and save. Now this syncs across between my iPhone, my iPad, and there, even if you're not on the uh, beta version of Mac OS, the newest drop of Safari does have tab groups in it. So this will sync to the newest drop of Safari, uh, even for the old system. I think it's Safari 15, I believe. Um, and then you can switch between them. Now there's also some keyboard commands with it, right? If we hold the command, I guess we'll scroll down to the window here and you can see we have a new empty tab group, delete tab group, Rename tab group, show previous tab group, and show next tab group. This really lets you cycle between them. There may be a way, but I haven't seen it. I don't see any keyboard shortcuts here clearly to create a new tab group with existing tabs. Um, from this UI, you do have to open the left sidebar, which you can do with another keyboard command, which is, where is it? File, open sidebar. Like shift, show sidebar, shift command L. All right, so I can do a shift command L. Oh, that wasn't L. So save shift command L. I can open the sidebar and then I could cycle between them. So tab groups I found super useful as temporary storage places for tabs. These are not tabs that are going to last forever. I'm doing some research. I'm collecting it for later. I may add to the tab group. So when I'm next researching gravel tires, I will open up my gravel or my road tires one or my gravel bikes for a new gravel bike. I will look it up. 
can come in here and like add a new gravel bike to this tab group if I'm looking up for a new gravel bike for racing. Now, probably the biggest thing that I have loved in iPad OS 15 and the one and really the thing that probably get me to upgrade to the Mac OS sooner. Usually I leave it for a couple months to like around Christmas time to upgrade Mac OS because I'm using it for development and sometimes the development tools don't work. But I'm going to upgrade because of focus modes. They have been stellar. So one thing I do, I do a lot of running, I do a lot of cycling. So I have a smart watch here that is sports specific. This is the Garmin Enduro for those that care and I have a 1030 plus on my bike. But I have never had notifications on any smart watches because I don't want them when I'm riding. I don't want to hear even from my cycling friends be like, hey, check out this new whatever tires, bike, whatever. I had a crash today. Let's talk about it. I don't care. The only people that should be able to text me then is my wife and my oldest daughter. So with focus modes, I can do that. And that has been excellent. So to access the focus modes, we need to open up settings. And then we need to come down to focus. And this is an extension of the do not disturb system. You can see I have do not disturb in here. Right now I have startup on because I was trying to automate that. Automations are okay, but we'll get to that. And so I have a workout one. If I select workout, you can see that the only people that can message me are my wife here and my oldest daughter. And the only apps that are allowed to message me are time sensitive notifications, right? That's it. This actually will sync between all systems as well because I want it to. Um, and if I wanted, I could set a home screen, but I don't have that anymore. Uh, I don't have that for my workout because I don't need it. I could set a custom lock screen as well, and I can change the name and appearance of it. So is there a better workout one? Not really. I wish there was more icons and colors here, but there's just simply not. So you got to deal with what you get. How do we set a new focus mode? So let's hit plus. Let's say I have one. These are all custom ones that can, they kind of give you some stuff, but I don't find them that useful. So we'll say custom. I'm going to name it test just because, or actually let's even name it uh, recording. So when I'm recording, what notification should happen? Really, it's going to be nothing, but we'll come up with something mainly for the home screen. So I can come in here and we'll say recording. What's a good one for that? Headphones? Why not? Next, uh, who can message me? None of these people can message me. I don't want any of them because that's it. Calls from no one, nobody, not even allow repeated calls. Done. So allow none is what I'm going to say. Perfect. I don't want music. I don't want time sensitive. So allow none. My focus is ready. Great. So the next thing I need to do probably is create a special home page for it. So when I'm recording, the apps I'll want to use are, I think I have a, there you go, this is a good one. So, although it's a lot of work, I want Filmic Remote in here. I don't want this. Delete. This takes a while, remove from home screen. So this is me setting up a custom home screen right now. So I have a custom home screen. The only other thing I might want in there is Obsidian, custom home screen. And I actually want Obsidian down on my toolbar as well. So you can add multiple apps, but maybe not to the toolbar. That's one thing that I have found confusing and found inconsistent, but it's probably actually okay. And I'm sure there's someone in the comment that's gonna explain exactly how to do it. And that Mac Stories review probably tells you exactly how to do it as well. Still waiting through that. So that's really all I would need on here is Filmic Remote. So now I can go back to my focus mode and I can go to the home screen and I can say custom pages and then I can pick the one with Filmic Remote on it. And Filmic Remote allows me to customize my or to control my iPhone from my iPad screen and actually show it there while I am recording. So I can like set up the view, I can like adjust it and see the view on my iPad and then hit record, adjust the focus, adjust everything. So the Filmic Remote does. That's really all I need when I'm recording. So I have other ones uh, here. This is for uh, writing, right? This opens up my uh, some music. I wanna see the weather. My focus picker as well, which switches between them. So I could say entertainment. So it's going to switch and it switched my home screen as well for me. I can see that I have my I have YouTube, Twitter, all those things that I need when I am doing entertainment. This has been the biggest, most awesome feature that I have used a lot. Now, the other thing that you can do with this is automations. 
with shortcuts and you know honestly shortcuts is super buggy in ipad os 15. i it's super super buggy but the only way to do shortcuts with automations is create a new personal automation or shortcuts with uh, focus mode is create a new personal automation we come down to whatever recording so i could even say recording when turning on next i can open an app the app i want to open is this is where we get our bugs just say next to save it because I can't. I don't want to ask before running. I just want to do that. Don't ask. Done. So when recording is turned, I'm going to come back in here and I'm going to go back to open app and I'm going to choose it now. Is it letting me? It's still not letting me choose it. In theory here, I can choose not letting me. So let's quit shortcuts because this is how shortcuts is going right now on iPad OS 15. Not really good at all. When I turn on recording, open app, and I'm touching with my fingers so you can't see the UI. Now I can see it. Now I can go in here and type filmic remote and done. I could even possibly hit the disclosure triangle. Oh, there you go. And I could do it into slide over if I wanted. You can even choose splits and other stuff like that. But I'm not going to show you any of that because <laughs> shortcuts is terrible right now on iPad OS 15. So now if I go up to even here, I can turn it on and I go into recording, Filmic Remote will show up. And I could, if I open up my phone over here, you can see, I'll open up Filmic over here. And then I choose my phone connecting. Now you can see that I can actually see my phone. You can see me recording right there too. So. That is a useful thing inside iPad OS 15. Focus modes are great. Shortcuts are they're terrible. They're terrible right now. There are so many bugs in shortcuts that I don't even know. Don't even say. So I regularly switch between like a writing mode. Um, I have like an entertainment mode and I just switch between them because it really customizes notifications and that extends to my smart devices. So it extends to my uh, bike computer only well, I'll see actually show up on my computer while I'm out messages from my wife, messages from my daughter. That's nice because I used to just have a special ring for them. I have to still stop and see what they said. Now I can at least look and it's like, hey, get milk on the way home or anything like that. I can just keep going because I don't need to hear it, right? If it's just a sending me a reminder, that's totally fine. Next up, widgets anywhere. You actually already have seen this on some of my home screens. So let's turn off. Uh, let's turn off this. As you can see, I have widgets everywhere. This is my XL things widget. You see, I have music, I have a photos widget. I love the photos widget. So since my recording screen is the blankest one, let's just add something here. So I'm gonna reach up and touch the screen until everything starts jiggling. Then I'll hit the plus. And I know things already has this, so let's just open it up. Things has an XL widget. So it has two of them. You'll see that in my things video. I talked about the XL widgets, right? I have a today one and I have this one. I like this one because it says tomorrow, Sunday, Monday. It kind of rolls forward and shows you what's coming up and I can put it anywhere. That's nice. Now, one bad thing about widgets, I'm actually not gonna show you this because it's kind of sucky and I don't actually need the things widget here, is that when you try to move them, it's like a total crapshoot. So say on a page like this, if I tried to move, or even this one, if I try to move like either of the two widgets on this side, things just like explode all over. In fact, this focus picker used to be like in a different spot because that seems like lame. But after like a few minutes of wrestling with exactly where to put the widgets and trying to get iPad OS to like really listen to me about where I wanted it, I just gave up because I couldn't do it anymore. It's just, I just couldn't do it anymore. Final feature we're gonna talk about is the new split screen. It is amazing. So let's start by looking at our keyboard commands. We're holding command. You can see we have a bunch. We have globe H. So we have the new globe key. Um, in my, I'm using a Royal Kluge 84. In my Royal Kluge video, I talk about remapping caps to globe um, in the software settings for the keyboard. But we have a bunch of new ones. Globe H for going home. Now I use Command H, that still works. Show app library. I never use app library, so sure. I never even use the dock actually, so I never use globe A. Like even on Mac, I don't even know why people care about the dock. Quick note, I don't use that, so I'm not gonna show it to you. Siri control center notification center, show keyboard shortcuts, globe M. Great, App Switcher, these are the important ones, right? App Switcher, we have globe up or globe um, left, I guess. So if I hit globe up, you can see I have the App Switcher. Again, I don't use this very often, so who cares? Where I really think it comes in powerful is if I go to YouTube, another another issue with iPad OS 15, right? You 
sometimes things don't work. So now I'm gonna hit uh, globe, control, left arrow, and it slides off to the side. And let's say I want to take notes, I know this. So now I could take notes on say this excellent Brian Jenks video about using templates in Obsidian. And I could take notes over here for it. That would be great. That's super useful. There are a bunch of keyboard commands with that, right? Globe, right arrow would switch it to the other side. You can also activate this with our three dots up top. Right, I can go make this full screen now. I could pop it to slide over like that. And you can do these things from, I can open up, say, what's the big one behind it? There you go, now I can open up this behind it. So I think that the split screen has really helped. My setup here, because I, again, I use my, with a keyboard, a remote keyboard, and my iPad is on a Visa stand that I built um, to hold iPads with a magnetic back cover, be a link to that video. And that has been excellent. Um, it's been excellent. I have loved the new split screen features. I use them all the time. Uh, it's just a really, really nice feature for iPadOS 15. That's really it. iPadOS 15, iOS 15 are really cool. Those are the features I think are important. They are focus mode and the new split screen features are by far my favorite features. Widgets are cool, um, but it depends on what apps you use and do they support Excel widgets. I think Excel widgets are the coolest ones so far. Um, the other ones, they're just standard widgets from your phone. Um, but focus mode, split screen, excellent. Live text is useful in certain situations. So even you could be in a foreign country and like highlight text and then go to translate. That would be excellent use as well. If you like the video, thumbs up below. If you loved it, subscribe, hit the bell. YouTube will let you know something happened. But honestly, shut off your notifications. You've got other things to do, like hang out with your kids or, I don't know, read stuff, something else. Other ways to support the channel, you can go below. You can take some of my courses on Skillshare. I've got some on Tick Tick. I've got one on, uh, kind of on Craft, but on Zettelcast. And I've got one coming up on Obsidian. Uh, I've got a bunch of them. So take them all. Or you can become a YouTube member. Join. Super thanks. All that stuff like that. Try to behave yourself today and have a good one.